I know it is. This boy King Rise. We out here. Roosevelt, Phil, Mall, Nassau County on the left side of Long Island. I'm out here with Freak Genius TV, man. It's a movie. What's up, man? What you working on right now? You know, working on everything, you know. As of right now, I'm getting ready to drop my, I would call it my second album. It's, it's going to be a free project, though. You know, eventually, I'm going to put it on iTunes, but I'm going to give it to the people for free. It's called King of America. Spelled A-M-E-R-I-K-K-K-A. -K -K -A. And the reason I spelled it with the KKK in it is because it's like white America. America with three K stands for white America. So me not being, I'm not just a king in America, I'm a king of America. Like, I'm, I'm a product of America, you know what I'm saying? I was born here, I was raised here, this is who I am, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, have, has, have you been getting like negative feedback because of the title? Um, I really, I've been getting a lot of, uh, a lot of looks off of the title, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, uh, I've been, I would say I've been busting down a lot of doors because of the title. Like, it'd be easier for me, for people to be able to listen to the song and easier, you know, for stuff to happen just based off of the titles of the album or whatever, you know? Yeah, and then I also seen when, when the cop pulled you over and all that, that, that also has been getting a lot of buzz. Yeah, that was... He let you go? Yeah, that was, that was a crazy situation. I was actually on my way. I was on my way to the mall. I was getting ready to do an interview with Newsday. And this was for, we were supposed to be, I was supposed to be doing a concert series. We're kicking off a concert series with the Long Island Music Hall of Fame, right in Wandage. They had just finished building some new apartments out there. So they kind of want to bring some attention to the apartments. They got some stores out there, like 99 cent stores. They got a bank there. So they, what they was trying to do was bring some money, some new money into the into the complex and the stores and stuff that was out there. And to do that, they was going to kick off the, uh, the concert series. So before all of this happened, I got pulled over by the police and they realized who I was because I was in a newspaper mm. for the concert series saying that I was going to be kicking off the concert series there. And he asked me to rap. Mm. Well, it was one officer on the left on the, on the driver's side. He came up, he took all my information and everything. I asked him why I got pulled over. That's the part that the people didn't see yet. I only released like 45 seconds in the video. Yeah. So, I asked him why I got pulled over, I asked him was there a problem, I was being real respectful, you know what I'm saying? And I had my camera on record just because of everything that had been happening. I'm like, you know what, I need my camera on record. I wasn't, I didn't even have no intention on rapping, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My whole intention was just to be safe and make sure that I got any, uh, any evidence that I might need just in case something crazy did happen. Yeah. But first cop went back to his car, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, the second cop came to the passenger side of the car. It was like, aren't you a rapper? And then he was like, let me hear something. And then I asked him, I was like, you sure you want to hear something? And, you know, he, he got what he asked for, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I got a song out called America. It's, that's the, actually the first single off of King of America. Yeah. And it's, it's about police brutality, racism. You know, it's about being black in America. The problems we go through just for, for not being who they are. You know yeah. And I gave him the second verse, and before I got to the end, he just, you know, he gave me a light tap on the car, and he walked away. And then they just let me go. Wow, that's crazy. Came and crazy. brought my stuff back and just let me go. Well, that's it. Nothing happened. That's crazy. So how do you feel about all the police brutality that's going on right now? I feel like it's very unfortunate. Like, I feel like half of it is happening because the police are scared of doing their own job. And the other half is just because they have the job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I feel like at the end of the day, it's, it's gonna happen. You know, as long as you have white cops that are dicks, it's gonna happen. Because I realize, like, I realize once I hit the news with America, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, Ku Klux Klan in Long Island. Yeah. And I was just speaking about it in general in, in the United States period, but once I hit the news with like with the whole song and everything, they started appearing. Like I started they, they were putting flyers everywhere and they started getting interviewed by the news and everything. Just they just started popping up. So wow. I put, started putting two and two together and I realized like okay, they the Ku Klux Klan. They said there's twenty five hundred of them out here. Wow. Right? <clears throat> out of those twenty five hundred, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't doubt that uh that some of them are cops. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't doubt that some of them work at the news stations. I wouldn't doubt that a lot of those a lot of those Ku Klux Klan members are, are in charge out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. Yo, and um you also I seen a con you know that you was um Akon's interested in signing you. 
Yeah, that, that was a crazy, I mean, that's kind of interesting, you know, I, I like it because, you know, every, every rapper want to be wanted, you know what I'm saying, not in a negative way, but, you know, in a positive way, that con once some contracts start being reached out and all of that, that's always a good look because everybody, everybody else that's looking, they don't want you till somebody else wants you, you know what I'm saying, so I yeah. feel like, alright, if it was a, if it was good, if even if the contract was good, I probably still would have waited a little bit just because, and I and, and still I would still let the info go out just yeah. so people could see like I, this Akon, he interested. That's Akon all the way up here. So mm -hmm. for him to be interested, I take that as I'm doing something good. Yeah. But the business wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was like it was kind of like a smack in the face. Like what was wrong? It was, the numbers wasn't right, man. Like, I'm, I, I'm not here to be a slave, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I got a life I'm living. I got a daughter. I got a whole family. I live on my own. So, I'm not going to take some chunk change and, and $17,000 for an advance is less than minimum wage for the year. Yeah, hell yeah. I could work. I would keep working and get that for the year and save that. <laughs> Like, yeah. I would never do that. I wouldn't do that to myself with seven albums. Like, yeah. even, even in the contract, it says that they're not obligated to give me seven albums. Mm -hmm. But if he wanted to, he could, I, if he wanted to, and I was and I was that desperate, I would have took that 17. And even though it says he wasn't obligated to give me that seven albums, could have held me for it. You know what I'm saying? Even yeah. if I wanted out. So they have the right to, but they're not obligated to. So it was kind of like, it was kind of like a... a a it's Max B like, contract. It's kind of like golden handcuffs. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. That's not good. Yo, so how did you get with um with Rakim and everything? Well, Rakim is is, is Wanda's family. Yeah. You know, so it's it's kind of it's, it's just there. You know what I'm saying? And I guess it's, it's something uh, he interested. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like I, I make I make okay music. My music dope. It's something that he probably could relate to. So he probably I probably remind him. Of my of himself, you know what I'm saying? So, so it is. The, the connection was made off of off of wine dance and, and we building right now actually. You know, we got a lot of good stuff in the works, you know? Oh yeah? That's what's up, man. Definitely, yo, so what else you got coming up right now? Got a lot coming up. I actually on the roof. I got about a good three projects finished in the studio right now. You know, but right now what I'm gonna do, like I said, I'm gonna give the people uh, a nice seven track EP, you know, to go along with the with the single itself. Cause what I do when I make when I make uh projects, I try to my, my focus is really not to make a project. My main focus is to make singles and the singles come together for the project and then the project is like a single. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because the, the market is different now, right? I mean, It's all about singles. Not even all about singles. It's just all about, it's all about what the people like at the end of the day. Like, yeah. if, you could, if, if an artist could move a body of people, then that's really what it's all about. It's not all about just having one hot song. It's not all about having one hot album. It's really all about what you could do with the people because if the people is not interested, then the music is relevant. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. So that's that's why I make the music I make. I make music that's relevant, something that people can relate to because that's something that's going to stick longer rather than just just something that people see and they like and they want to make a song about it. Like I make something that's I make shit relevant, relevant you know, everyday life shit. You know? Yeah. What are some of like your, your influences? How did you get started? You know? Huh? We okay, can't. You want to know what's okay? I just right. seen somebody filming down there. He had the whole tripod and everything. He was uh, approved by management office. So I was guys... too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. My name is Kid Mario. I'm an artist and they tell me I can come there and film. Just tell me we'll be done in two more minutes. Who are you spoke to management office? My manager spoke to the management office. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't have a name. That's nice. Well, I don't have a name. But I got the approval. So you can ask. It'll be two more minutes. Just give me two more minutes. It's a, a it's a, a school project. Just real quick. All right, thank Anybody you. Else come? It's a school project. We just started just school. Quick, because if anybody else sees, they're gonna tell you the same thing. Okay, right? thank you, thank you, sir. Anyway, damn. Back to what we was doing. See shit like that. I'm gonna write a song about that. Yeah. Being in the mood, not having the freedom of recording, like yeah, I'm gonna say Yeah. How are you gonna stop? How are you gonna come stop us from filming because it's a camera? You know what I'm saying? Like, what if, what if I had, what if you had the phone out? Would it yeah. be the same? Like, would it be the same reaction? No, yeah. it wouldn't be. So, 
leave us the fuck alone and let us do what we do. You're doing thing. something positive. Yeah. So yeah, so so what are some of your um influences? Back to that. Influences is like I said, life. You know, stuff that I go through. I write songs about like my daughter influences me. She motivates me. Um I would say Rock Kim is definitely an influence just from being influential, to, so influential to everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Like being a, like a, uh, he changed the folk out in the hip hop, you know? Yeah. Not even just that, it's just, it's, the way he think, the way he, the way he uses words and everything, it's, it's incredible, you know what I'm saying? So that's something that I want to be like, like I want to, I want to be somebody that's, that influences, um, the masses, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, not even, not, not just a state, not just a country, the world, you know? Yeah, that's what's up. And yo, I seen some shit on Twitter with you going, you and Ebro going back and forth. Oh man, that's, that needed to happen. Because well, what happened? Like this, like a, a closed mouth can't be fed, man. And I followed him on Twitter. I was following him and I was just looking at some of his tweets. He was talking to other people. And I seen him tweet something to somebody saying that he always plays whack shit. He always plays shit that he think is garbage and that he doesn't like because he a DJ. And that, I was kind of confused because I'm like, okay, if you a DJ and you got the opportunity to play something that you like, why wouldn't you play something that you like? Why wouldn't you play something that, if you like it, why, and, then, and you know that it's an underground artist or an artist that has the potential to be a huge artist and you have that platform, why wouldn't you play that music and give the people a chance to like something that you think is good rather than forcing them to sing along and like something that you think is whack, you know what I'm saying? So I voice my opinion, I'm like, yo, Ebro, when you gonna play some real shit and not some bullshit? Mm -hmm. And he hit me right back. He was like, he was like, what you mean? <laughs> I was like, what you mean what I mean? Like, play some, play some real shit, look at my bio. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And pick something. And he was like, I need some specifics. And then I, it just went from there, man. Yeah. I was just like, at the end of the day, he see what it is, you know? That's I was one of the Hot 97 Who's Next finalists. Yeah, you know, I, I, I got seen picked that. because of the video that I submitted. Oh, okay. And that was the change with Rock Kim and Eric Sermon. I mean, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was because of that, I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, I got there. And unfortunately, I didn't win the last round. I made it to the last round. But nice. I kind of think it was a little rigged because the, last, the artist was from Brooklyn. They held the last round in Brooklyn. And yeah. there were three judges. Three, the three judges were, um, we had Diggy Simmons, we had T.T. Torres from Hot 97, and DJ Enough from Hot 97, right? So once I got done performing, they gave me like an excellent review, told me they liked this, they liked that. Everything, they ain't give me no type of constructive criticism. Yeah. The last artist, they told him everything that he could have did better. And they still gave him a W. Wow. You know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, I look at it like this, man. They, maybe they was helping him out. Maybe they were like, all right, this kid is basically already there. Yeah. We're going to give somebody else a chance. We're going we gonna to let this dude finish grinding it out. I don't know. That's that's how I look at it so I don't be mad at it, you know? Yeah. One more question. I know because you got a dip. Um, how do you feel about Long Island and, and you know everything going on out here with the movement and everything? I love Long Island. I love the Long Island music. I love everything about it. And the reason I do is because it's like it's like we we the diamonds in the dirt right now. You know what I'm saying? We we so far under the dirt. It's not even funny. Like we gotta we, we got something to prove. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of people out here that I don't like. There's a lot of people out here that I do like. But at the end of the day. I gotta do what I gotta do for not for just me, for everybody, you know. So whether if I'm if I break out before one of my boys break out, then my boy gonna be right there with me and, and vice versa, even for somebody that I don't like. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, once the attention comes here, then it's a wrap. Everybody yeah. on. It's, it's seven million people out here. Yeah. I, I couldn't I wouldn't even be able to guess how many of those seven million people were artists. Yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like we Long Island is bigger than Rhode Island. Yeah. Like, it's not even the state. You know, so think about that. Like, I could go platinum right in Long Island. I could go yeah. triple platinum in Long Island. Like, yeah. I don't even have to leave Long Island if I don't want to. But we got everybody got to wake up first. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, you're right about that. So how do people contact you? Some of contacts. Um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Real King Myers. I'm about, I got free music on SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com/slash King Myers. iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Pandora. 
Anyway, just just type in King Myers, man. That's King of America man. drops on 9/11. All right, oh, yeah. it's gonna be on Spin Villa. You can get it for free. I'm gonna release it for free for everybody. If you wanna support, it'll be on iTunes. Do what you gotta do. Just make sure you get the music, spread the word. That's you know? what it is, man. Any any last words? Last words, there? man. Shout out to Freak Genius TV for coming all the way out here to capture this moment, man. I salute. Good looking, bro. Right. Appreciate it. All right.